Hi everyone, Christina here. Today I'm going to be doing some alphabet die cutting and I'm using the Highline Alphabet lowercase dies from My Favorite Things. I'm also going to be using a stamp set from My Favorite Things called Friends Like Us. I thought it'd be really fun to pair these two products together for a couple cards. So I've taken the greeting that I'm going to stamp later and placed that onto some cardstock here. This cardstock is cut to four inches tall and five and one quarter wide. And I just placed that stamp on there so I could get a visual of where it was going to be eventually so that I could plan out the die cutting. I drew on a line using my T-square ruler so I can make sure the dies are on there completely straight. And then I very carefully place the dies and space them out perfectly to exactly where I wanted them to be. Then I took some post-it tape and very gently place it over those dies, making sure I didn't move the dies as I placed that tape down. I then ran it through my die cutting machine and it cut out those letters and I'm not going to be using the actual letters that are cut out today. I just set those aside for a different project. Instead, I'm going to be using the negative area. So everything that was around the letters. I inked up my stamp with some VersaFine Black Onyx ink and stamped that right below the die cut word. And now I'm going to do a little bit of blending and um, also adding a little more stamping for that piece that's going to go behind the die cut piece. So I have another piece of cardstock that's cut to the exact same size. And before I get to blending and stamping, I wanna give myself a good guide for where those letters are because I'm going to have to remove this die cut piece so I can work on the cardstock underneath. So I'm using a craft sheet now and some butter bar ink from Hero Arts and I'm going to be blending in some of that color in from the bottom. And this is why I needed to mark where those letters would be because I wanted the letters to be more concentrated yellow at the bottom and have it fade off to near the top. So I needed to see exactly where the bottom of those letters would be and I'm just placing that over the top so I can get a good visual of what it's going to be. And then I'll continue to blend some more. So after I had all of the blending done that I needed to, I went ahead and tested it out one more time. And then I took the dotted border stamp that comes in the same stamp set and I stamped it so that it would be at the very bottom of the letters. So I marked where the bottom of those letters would be inked up my stamp with that same ink that I used previous for the blending. So this is just going to be a slightly more concentrated color. And then I stamped it where it would be at the very bottom of those letters. I just thought this look would be really, really neat with the die cut area over the top. So I trimmed down that piece. Um, I just took about an eighth of an inch off each side so that it would keep everything still centered. And then I prepped my card base. I scored my card base at four and a quarter so it would create a top folding landscape card. And then I adhered the blended and stamped piece right over the top. And I made sure to have this completely centered so that the those dotted, so the dotted border stamp still is in the correct spot for the die cuts over the top. So I added a bunch of foam adhesive, and this sort of looks like overkill, like way too much foam adhesive, but I wanted to make sure that there wouldn't be any areas in the center, especially around those letters, that would sag if I sent this through the mail. They don't want anything to get squished. And even so, I think when I send this card in the mail, I'll probably put it in a padded envelope or a bubble mailer to make sure that it arrives without too much damage. I adhered that interior spot on the letter A, put some foam behind that and then just use my tweezers. And that was the first card. So now I'm going to create the same card design, but I'm going to switch up how things are inked to make a different card. So now I'm going to be working on the front of the card where there's the die cutting, but this time I'm going to have the ink blending on the front piece instead of the piece that's behind the die cutting. So I'm taking three different colors of Distress Ink and blending them onto this white card stock. I'm using tumbled glass, peacock feathers, and pine needles. And after I initially blended on all three, then I went back in reverse order and blended on once again. 
wanted to note that before I did tumble glass for a second time, I did clean up my craft sheet because all of that darker ink had transferred onto the craft sheet. So after I did that, I also put down a piece of paper so my hands wouldn't get dirty on that one end while I held it, and then blended on some more tumbled glass. Because distressed ink does take quite a bit of time to dry, I hit this with my heat tool to help help it dry more quickly. And then I did some die cutting. Now these die cut, these dies, the letters were still on the post-it tape from the previous card. So I just placed that onto this new piece and die cut it. And I'm going to be doing some heat embossing and I want to make sure that this, this area isn't going to have embossing powder sticking to it where I don't want it. So I did a test run. I just wanted to make sure that the extra embossing powder would be able to shake off and it did pretty well. So I inked up my stamp with the Versamark ink. This is a different greeting from the same stamp set and it, the greeting is only on one line and because of that I knew I needed to take up some space below the greeting. So I also stamped a heart from the stamp set. I stamped this heart three times and I first stamped the center heart and then I stamped the two hearts on either side. And this just makes it so the spacing on this card is a little bit better. After I stamped the hearts, I sprinkled on some Hero Arts white embossing powder and then just tapped the cardstock to shake off the excess. I did have to uh, brush away some of the extra powder with just a dry brush, but it wasn't anywhere near the words or the hearts, so it turned out well. I heat set that till it was melted, and now I have another piece of white cardstock that's cut to the same size. I'm just going to mark where the very bottom of the letters are, and I'm going to be stamping that same dot border stamp that I used on the previous card, but this time I'm using Simon Says Stamp Fog Ink. I really wanted a pale gray ink to be behind the letters, and this turned out perfectly. So I trimmed it down, taking an eighth of an inch off each edge to keep it centered, and then adhered it down to the card. I also used some foam adhesive like I did on the previous card to adhere the die cut piece over the top. And then I took that interior piece from the letter A and very carefully adhered that right in the center like I did on the previous card. So here I have two different cards that have essentially the same card design, but I've switched up the way that they are inked. So you, you can get a good idea of what you can do when you have a good card design, but just want to change things up a little bit. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I will be back tomorrow for a bonus video. Until then, thanks for watching. for watching till the very end of the video. On screen I have three more card videos that I've made in the past that use die cut letters. In fact, they all three of them use the same alphabet dies. So if you want to check those out, you can click on those at any time. You can visit my blog at kwarnerdesign.com. And thank you so much for watching. Please rate this video, give it a big thumbs up, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks for watching.